What's going on guys? Welcome back to The Cora Elise Show where you get to laugh, learn and grow with me every single week. On today's episode, there is a massive emphasis on beauty standards and joining me on the episode today is Elizabeth Grant, also known as Miss England and Miss Preston. She got scouted in Preston Town to become Miss Preston, which she won and then went on to become Miss England. She speaks about the pressures of holding the title of Miss England and the critique that she's faced. But she also speaks about the wins and the experience as a whole and how it has inspired her to become the best version of herself. She also shares her personal experience of her older sister passing away with cancer and how her and her family have devoted themselves to charities. We also get into a few little tangents as always on these episodes about Marvel and traveling. Overall, this was a really, really good chat with Liz. It flowed so beautifully. Really hope you enjoy the show, guys. Hope you learn from this and don't forget to rate, subscribe and share with friends and family. Enjoy the show. Yeah, yeah. Yo, it's well all gone. good. <laughs> <Hi>. <laughs> it's all good. How are yeah. you? You okay? You know, it's. I'm good. The good. Yeah, I'm gonna speak it into existence. I'm doing good. Okay. Hopefully, it can get better <laughs> this morning. Yeah. I can't even lie. Like I'm not even fronting on yet. I'm feeling anxious today. It's okay. It's all good. It's fine. I find like halfway through, you start to relax, and then that's when all the juice comes out. <laughs> You've just gotta let it it's let it ride. It yes. In the morning. In the morning. Do you prefer okay. to be called Elizabeth or Liz or like? I like Elizabeth when it's people that I don't know. Okay. But I know you. Yeah. So the thing is, we know each other and we see, like, if we see each other in the street, it's like, hi, but we've never actually sat down and spoke like this. I was going to say, yeah. Like, Why I know, not? I know Why all of you and it's like, oh, I love what you're doing. Like, this is exactly. sick. We should meet up. And then, nothing. Good sound effect. Thank That'll sound you. sick on the podcast. You're welcome. You're welcome. Because <laughs> that's why social media is so good for that, like, that kind of thing when you can sort of connect and meet up with people, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It's good. I, I mean, there's so many different avenues you could go down with yeah. social media, but I like the fact that we can just jump on and be like, look, I need to see exactly. you tomorrow. Can yeah. you do this? Yeah, let's link up. Yeah, exactly. So tell the listeners a bit about yourself in terms of, you know, your journey going into Miss Preston and then Miss England. And am I right in saying you got scouted in Primark? Is that Ooh, right? Not Primark. Okay. It was St. George's. I mean, that's an upgrade, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would have added more to my story. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> yeah, that scouting in Primark. I was looking at the bras. That's and, amazing. Uh... <laughs> was she expecting that? or? Oh, good God, no. The story is <laughs> hilarious. Okay. Right, Tell so... us a story. Come on, get ready, get settled. Okay. I'm going to drink mm-hmm. water. Go on. Mm-hmm. So, I was working at a bar shift in Loft. Okay. Loft is it's like the 6 a.m. place. So, like, it's. Oh. It was awful. Basically, as soon as you come out and the lights are up, like you just realise how decrepit you look. But I needed... It's in Preston, by the way, for those who don't know. Oh, yeah. Peter. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's not anymore. It's called Floriana's, which is a sick place. Yeah. Um, I've but... heard. I need to go there. Bro, I think I've got a job there as well. Oh, so I might pop in. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, carry on with this story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry. This is what I mean. These tangents, bro. Right. Um, so, yeah, I was coming out of Lofties and it was my boyfriend at the time. We were going for... A weekend away in Manchester. Right. It was a Valentine's, uh, Valentine's weekend. And I thought, fuck, I don't have a present. Like, I don't have anything. Like, I've just been working so hard. What the hell do I do? And I'm I wondering just... where this is going because you obviously said you were looking at bras, but carry on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I ended up... Well, I got my stuff before that. I was I was kind of prepared in that regard. But I didn't get a present for him. And I thought... Mm. So I went to Pandora, which is like in St. George's. You go down the stairs and then Pandora's up. But there's a big kind of area in the middle that is just kind of free for everybody. Okay. And I'd walk past and there were some banners of Miss England and Miss Preston and some beautiful girls, like absolutely gorgeous girls. And I'm just walking around with my big hoodie on, like I've got dead big eyes under here, like sleep's coming out of my eyes. I'm like, I should need to get this present, go back. That is a massive compliment that you got scouted in that, in, you know, in that sense. You weren't <laughs> dolled up and you got scouted when you were just sort of chilling. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, it was... I just didn't want to have any type of conversation. I didn't want to be seen. You know, one of those days yeah. you're like, I should, let me get my stuff and go. Like, I, I can't be asked with any type of conversation. But I'm walking past and this girl, stunning, she's one of my close friends now. 
And uh, she walked past and she went, hi, um, would you like to be like scouted for Miss Preston? And I can't lie. My first reaction was that exactly what you just did. I was like, no. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Why? No, I'm not. You can clearly see I'm dressed in trackies. I've got an oversized hoodie. It's got like stains on. I'm not like a beauty pageant girl. No, like allow that. And she was like, no, it's not. Oh, you know, all about beauty and whatnot. It's more about fun. And I thought... Uh, to go back a little bit, my older sister passed away when mm. I was five and I've always vowed to myself, just a personal thing for me, like whatever comes my way, any opportunities, I want to yeah. say, yeah, she passed away at 12. She didn't get a chance. So anything that I can do that is kind of out of the box, I'm like, yeah, I'll do it. I'm doing mm. it for me and I'm doing it for her. So when she was like, just sign up, we'll just see how it goes. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Yeah, let's do this. We'll sign up. Mm. Got it all through. And then within three or four days they were like oh we've shortlisted you for like one of the finalists for miss preston you know come through we've got all this meet up we're going to meet the rest of the girls and see how people gel and whatnot and i was i was a bit scared mm. I was scared because i thought well give me your opinion yeah because when you think about beauty pageants what is your first world peace world peace <laughs> like miss congeniality there you go that was what i wanted I miss think, congeniality there you go get you in more oh calm calm <laughs> miss congeniality yeah so it's like oh i really want world peace and just the rest of the world to be so happy and they're just very pretty like aesthetically mm. but nothing going on up there and i was like <laughs> I'm, I'm doing a degree. I'm I'm pretty, yeah. like, I've got substance. But then when so. you got... It, was that the case? Was a lot of... Obviously, I'm not, you don't have to shame on the other girls or anything, but was that the case? Was it a lot of people, it's more about the beauty than what's in here? For the Miss Preston and Miss England organisation, it couldn't be farther from the truth. Right. I was so shocked because I went in thinking, oh, my God, I'm going to have to deal with, like, really bait conversations. Like, oh, did you see Love Island? Or did you see what happened? <laughs> yeah. like, oh, my God, someone just liked my post. And da, da, da. I was like, oh, yeah, oh, my God. Yeah. And it wasn't. Everyone had so many good stories, but they weren't superficial. Okay. It was incredible. So I was like, this is mad. I really like this. Mm. So I really gave it my all in that regard. And the girls just wanted to go and have fun. They were there for a purpose. You know, they were trying to get um, more fundraising or they were just trying to exude more confidence, more self-esteem. And I was there for it. Like these girls just wanted to better themselves. I was like, yeah, do it, girl. Mm. You're a champion. Let's go. Let's do this together. And um, when we did the final when it got through to like all the different rounds and whatnot there was one girl on rehearsal day who was just smashing it she was walking out she had this like elegance about her i think she'd done one before Mm. like a junior pageant and we were all like jesus christ (laughs) we've got we've got no chance so at that point it was maybe like 10 a.m on the rehearsal day and we're like yeah fuck this no we're just gonna sit back and just let this girl take it because she's clearly got it Mm. And we just had fun with it and it was more authentic because a lot of girls were like, for example, in the talking stage, Mm. like we had an eco round. So you'd make this beautiful dress out of trash or recyclables or charity event type of things. And they'd come on and they go, oh, yeah, well, this dress was made from crisp packets from over the years or the kids that I volunteer with. and And it was an incredibly scripted type of response mm. a stock phrase almost yeah. like they knew what they were doing and it just seemed so seamless and so when like it was coming up to my turn I was like I don't have any of that like, <laughs> what are we gonna do oh my god and I think the panic almost it it came off authentic yeah and organic it weren't as well not false but you look more natural because it was just like this is me yeah yeah which yeah. is probably why they loved you Oh, I think so. I think, I, I, ooh, I don't know. I think just talking about it, I'm like, oh, no, it's cringy because yeah. it's happened. But yeah, no, you're probably right. I think it worked well in my favour. But the girls were just so happy to see everybody just doing what they wanted mm. to do. I mean, to be fair, when we got to the Miss England final, there was something that I thought would have caused catastrophic meltdown. Okay. Two girls had the same dress. Oh, not gonna be Mm-mm. Mm-mm. <laughs> right i'm thinking oh my god it was there was coventry and newark i think right. so they were kind of like you know how social media goes like, oh i've got my top 10 or i think this girl's gonna be good she's gonna be the dark horse there was all that going on mm. and then these girls in the midst of it were like oh well we've got the same dress 
what are we going to do? And all of us were like, oh my God, like just get the popcorn, just sit down and just kind of <laughs> watch what's going on. Now, because the girls were like, oh, that's fine. Don't worry about it. I'll wear my hair down. You wear yours up. And like, we'll just stagger where we go. And I thought, how mature? These you know girls what? at the time were like 18 as well. Yeah. So you think, you know, when you're in a beauty pageant, you're a miss. You've got that huge ego, especially at 18 when you're trying to figure out your life and whatnot. Mm. Oh, it could send you west. But these girls were so switched on. That's so refreshing to hear mm. because you know what? Like you do think, you do think like it's bitchy and it's going to be like just yep. all very girly in that sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that's so refreshing to hear. Like it's, that's good. I was, I was blown away. Mm. I mean, I, it's a blessing that I won first time and you know, ha ha this is all really cool and really great. But I wish I didn't so I could have done it again mm. because the run up to it, all the charity events, all the... Um, or the meetings or like the brainstorming that you had with the girls like oh that'd be a good idea but maybe if we did it this way or I could come along and I could bring one of my magician friends you know to bump mm. it up and you're like yes so this once is you great. win do you can you not do it again once you've won then no oh I know like if I had won Miss Preston and then gone to Miss England and didn't win mm. I could have gone through like Miss Lancashire or Miss okay. Northwest and gone again Right. Because I'd won the national title, they were like, "Yeah, that's it." So you won the you went you did Miss Preston, then you went straight to Miss England, literally. Mm, no, because it depends on how big like your city or how big your heat okay. is. And Preston being like super tiny, they were like, you, "You've got to go through to the semi-finals," right. which was almost like a baptism of fire. <laughs> <laughs> it was like 50, 56 girls, I think, and only fifteen were going through. That's tight. And this, this is like mm. up and down the country, bro. So people. I mean, from Preston, well, the Northwest, actually, I don't just want to say Preston because we had Lancashire, Northwest, Cheshire. They were all so good. Mm. So, so good and, like, so down to earth. Very Northern. Right. You know, that type of Northern. Us Northerners are friendly, though. Mm, Come on. Like... We are. And we're just here for a good time. Yeah. Do you know what? Since I moved in the Midlands, no offence to the Midlanders, but the more south you go, <laughs> the more south you go, honestly. It, the, it, yeah, the nose kind of adds like incline. It, yeah. goes, it goes up. It's like, why, like, why are you smiling? Right. I'm like, oh, it's a nice day. You I smile good. at everyone. They're like, you're all right. I'm like, yeah, I'm just smiling. I'm just smiling. <laughs> like, let me be happy. Let me send this you energy smile, your smile. way. That's it. Have it. Have the energy. But yeah, Northerners, Northerners are friendly. So, you know. Northerners are the best. Like, yeah. you can, it doesn't you can surprise me bro. that Miss Preston won Miss England. <laughs> 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 it's a Northern. That's what it is. Well, there was that on top of it because mm. before me there was miss cheshire and then miss cambridge there was another one i think oxford and it goes down like it was all very southern for okay. a long time <laughs> right a long long time bearing in mind i was the first black miss england i want to speak about that mm-hmm. because so we're in in the contest how many people of color was there in the contest in my year yeah Three or to four. count one hand, yeah, yeah. one hand. And how many? How many across the board? So that, that's three or four out of how many? And the Miss England final, yeah, one hundred and twenty. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I know. Sort it out, <laughs> <laughs> Miss England. Get your shit together, Has it got bro. Any better? Because obviously, when this happened, when was this? When you did Miss England? Oh, now? we're going back five years, two thousand sixteen. Two thousand sixteen. Okay. Yeah. So, do you know if it's gone any better in terms of bringing more people of colour in the contest, or is it the same? I feel I feel really proud to say this, but it has. It's got okay. it's gone up. That's good. And uh, I get so many messages even now from girls who are wanting to go in and be like, you know what? I just mm. I don't really want to use that term, but I idolize where you've come from and what you're doing afterwards because even though you are Miss England for yeah. a year, yeah, that carries you on. You still have to hold that torch in a sense to be the nation sweetheart mm. or like i am represented england i could be doing my own stuff i've got my own life going on but i've still got to have that that's a lot of persona. pressure though as well isn't it girl no one tells you about that no one tells you about the pressure that comes <laughs> this through is the with thing, it. like if you're caught doing whatever like say if you're drunk on a friday night people like, that's miss england you know oh yeah you know what i mean mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like you can't it's almost like you're being watched as well 100 percent yeah. How do you deal with that pressure? I know you've got your little, <laughs> your little anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> I've got like my little anxiety toy here because I'm just <laughs> feeling really panicked today. I don't know why. I think it's all bringing it back up going through this. Um, it's like therapy. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's therapy. Mm. It's good. Therapy is, is oh, it's a dream. If everyone can do it, go and do mm. it. It'll help you in the long run. Um, 
but I had my family who were an absolute gem throughout the entirety of it. Mm. Um, but we didn't know what was going on. Like I said, how I got scouted, it was just, I was walking through town. They went, yo, come and do it. Yeah, it happened I, so yeah, quick. But, yeah. So quickly. It wasn't like toddlers and tiaras, mm. you know, who I've been, I've been doing it for years. And my mum was like, oh, always walk straight and always walk side on and yes. look at the judges. Like those little tips. No one told me that. Mm. It was just something that you had to learn through going through it like a baptism of fire basically i just yeah. got thrown in straight at the deep end and my family had no idea so when i'm coming back stressed or like i've got to do these blogs i've got this person to call i i don't know i need to take a promotional picture because mm. like i'm saying this was five years ago mm. so it was just when like influencers were coming on the up yeah it was very fresh then weren't it it weren't um mm. that was my shoe by the way it was <laughs> it was <laughs> It wasn't as like I think really Instagram is all they've really been over the last four four years, three years. Hundred percent like yeah. peaked, you know what I mean? That's it. Like it only just started coming about then, didn't it? Yeah, to the influencer type of thing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like posing in a certain way, filters, edits, ads, like, all that kind of ads, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. People being sponsored. That only came through like about four or five years ago. Mm. So I feel like I, I just missed out. Just. You did, but you also had that sort of head start as well in terms of to get used to it before mm, mm-hmm, it definitely. became yeah. big. Mm. Oh, well, there was like a huge thing because I was in my second year at uni mm-hmm. doing psychology in early childhood and I love psychology, loved it. Like I've always wanted my degree in that. Mm. And when I came out of Miss England, there was a huge chance that I could go down the modelling or the presenting route. Okay, this was before you got started. No, no, this is after, after, like, I'm just jumping across. Um, So, like, 2017, finished it. I've said to uni, I'm taking a sabbatical. But now it's like, I'm back. Do I go and do my final year? Do I get my degree that I've always wanted? Mm. Or this amazing opportunity to model and present? Like, Mm. where do I go? That was an awful crossroads for me. And I think, in hindsight, probably should have gone down the modelling and presenting route. That would have been a much easier transition and mm. then just gone back and done it. Um, but here we are. It's cool. Don't worry about Everything it. You make mistakes. for a reason. Exactly. You know, like you've got, you've got your degree now then, I'm guessing. I yeah. have. I so have. you've got that. You've done it. And imagine if you did the modelling and then you would have had gone back to the degree. That that would have been just as stressful because you're mm. out of practice then. Totally. Like, yeah. I thought about doing my master's and I was like... <laughs> no, What's your degree in? Too... So mine was in childhood studies. Uh-uh. But then I got into fitness. <laughs> Okay, sure. Yeah, yes. there's a very thin line. Yeah, but you, you know what? When I finished my degree, I got into fitness for children, and then I started working with adults. Okay. And then I wanted to do my masters in physio, but that's get that now. <laughs> that's not happening. <laughs> never say never. Maybe in a few years, but right now, no, yeah, it's no. A no-go. Right now, I'm taking over Joe Rogan. That's what I'm doing. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're in a fantastic job, bro. Thank Joe, you. We're coming for you. Watch bro. out, Joe. Watch out. <laughs> <laughs> so, how did you deal with the pressures then? Like, you know. After I'd won? After, yeah. Because like you said, you had so many eyes watching afterwards. How did you deal with that? So many eyes. Did you have a tactic or something that you would do to, to cope with it? My boyfriend at the time, I do just want to give a heads up, Curtis. Like, I'd, we still talk now, but my God, you were a rock, bro. You saved me countless times. Um, well done, Curtis. Yeah, thanks, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he just embodied all the stress that I had. He was just like, no, give it here. You just, you enjoy. This is your year. You go and do what you needed to do. So I had Curtis on my side. My mum and my dad were trying to figure out because they were still in that hype of, oh my God, my daughter's with England. And yeah. She's going to Miss World and we used to watch Miss World. And they trying to had to park that to then try and help my mindset. Um, but I can't lie. It was every day, every evening, there was always something to catch up on. So my social life with my friends or my family was done by the wayside. But what I found quite frustrating is that there wasn't really any guideline or like a guidebook to say, this is what you kind of need to do um, in the first week or the first month. Maybe try and focus on this, focus on that. It was just things that I had to do within my contract. They were like, yeah, just go here and do that. Do this and do that. But then say if I had to go to a charity event Mm. cut a rope of something and they were Mm. like right okay do that but remember you've got your social media you've got to thank your clothes you've got to take pictures you've got to be on live you've got to do this and that you've got to be looking good you can't just turn up in joggers "Mm, mm, mm." (laughs) oh that is another story my guy that is another story 
So I was 20 yeah. at the time. And as a 20 year old girl, you kind of want to, you know, show off, show off your body a bit. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm, I'm looking good. I want to show it off. And yeah, that wasn't, that wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no. Yeah. Which I kind of knew, but I was like, can I, can I maybe show this good too? Yeah. Can I maybe show leg? But then keep chest and then vice versa. Mm. You know the rule. Mm. The, rule like, the rule. Everyone knows the rule. Mm. But then, so they didn't didn't want you to show any skin. Uh, it wasn't like you can't do this. It was just more when you turn up as Miss England, take that as a uniform. Right. Like you've got to park Liz mm. and then come to Miss England, Liz. Okay. So it was trying to differentiate between the two. Mm. And at twenty, you're trying to figure out life. You're trying to figure out yourself, and you're like, I. Am I losing myself to Miss England? This is the thing. You're just about trying to find your identity. Then someone's like sort of taking it yeah, away every like, time. No, you're not allowed to do that. Yeah. Not like maybe don't do that. But just at this time for this year, no, you're not allowed. Mm. You've got to do something else. And I was like, oh, okay, okay. Because I didn't know how to say no. Mm. Well, you <laughs> don't at 20 no, as well. No, do you have? And when you're like so young as well, you're thinking, I'm Miss England. Like, this is amazing. You know, you don't want to ruin your chances of anything as well at the time. Oh, that's it. You said yes to everything. Yeah. Doesn't matter how stressed you were or like, oh, I need you down in London in two hours. Well, the train takes four, but yeah, I can do it. Mm. It's fine. Don't worry about it. I'll make mm. it happen. So much pressure. Oh, the stress. But I can't... It. Mm. Diamonds come from pressure. I am in such an amazing place right now, mm. having been baptised in fire like yeah. it was just in you go sink or swim they say that's the best way though isn't it rather than mm. like building it up like just get in there no time to think about it that's it just get in there if I had time to think mm. I'd have panicked I'd have just got lost in myself and spiralled yeah and I didn't want to do that I have a year I'm on a clock right now <laughs> like I've got shit to do bro yeah. oh can I cuss on that of course you can okay fuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit late now I know <laughs> it is <laughs> that's fine I'm so it's sorry. all good. I know here I am missing them. Like, yeah, we're <laughs> yeah, we're sorry. You got this standard. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's mouth fine, bro. Look, it's calm. Don't worry about it. I'm real. That's yeah, what I mean. That's, that's what Miss England should be. Should be real. Mm. Like, if you had Miss England as like someone who is one, you know, mask on the on the stage, and then mm. there's something else. Like, it's... that's that was one thing. That's a really good point. I never wanted to to have just one mask and then me on stage because I feel like I'm not being true because mm. there's so many people that idolise Miss England and they're young they're impressionable and yeah. that is pressure bro going on the fact that I was the first Miss England to be going to Miss World mm. I was like I'm holding the Miss England title I'm holding the black woman title oh, thank you thank you first 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 black girl to win Miss England as well uh, I can't legally say that because yeah. there was another girl but then okay. something happened and she couldn't go to Miss World. Right. So that I we am... know of then. That we know of. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'll, just, I'll just park that. <laughs> <laughs> Take that title. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So I'm the first black Miss England to go to Miss World. Mm. If you add that bit on, that's absolutely fine. No lawsuits, I hope. So this <laughs> Miss World, I wasn't aware of this. Miss yeah. World. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. So when you win Miss Preston, you get entered into the next stage which mm-hmm. was my semis. Got through in a judge's choice. Final. Cool did the final got through to miss world like oh my god yeah. this is amazing oh miss world was something else <laughs> something else like i said in miss preston and miss england these girls were like sisters right. they just wanted the best for everybody you know if they didn't get through to the top 20 but their friend did they'd be out in the stage clapping for him okay it was beautiful miss world on the other hand um it was i am the best looking woman in my country so treat me as such okay mm. this is where the, the bitchiness comes in then. Mm-hmm. this is a miscongeniality type of mm. type of deal i don't think that's ever gonna fully go in these kind of contests like, like i said maybe miss england like it's got better but mm. when you've got so many different cultures that's in one ex- exactly what i was gonna say like to yeah for a quick example in the philippines mm. they idolize beauty pageants it's mm. almost up there with royalty and right. the Miss Philippines at the time was Katarina Gray, okay. who is now just handed over from Miss Universe. Right. I can't lie to her. She was an absolute angel in disguise. She was so genuine. But the way that the, her country put her on a pedestal mm. was exhausting to watch. 
absolutely exhausting. There were so many things that she couldn't do, shouldn't do, or if she mi- like did a misstep somewhere, it was all in the paper, everywhere. And people had all these opinions on what she should do, what mm. she should wear. And I'm like, girl, she's just... She's a young She's a hawk. human girl. She's a human girl. Like, I'm doing the same thing as her. Yeah. However, though, if she was to walk down the street in the Philippines, crown and sash, she'd get mobbed. If I was to walk down the street, crown and sash, they go, oh, you're right, Liz. Yeah, they're like, you're, you're feeling all right. <laughs> you're good. <laughs> that you're good, right? <laughs> you know, yeah, they just dap me up and I'd be like, yeah, calm. But it's just a different mindset mm. completely. But I'm blessed to have had that chance. And so we've been there to experience the different cultures and the different, the different ways that all these girls... But then you've got the as well, like, if you've got so many different cultures, I know that skin tone is a big thing in different cultures. So mm-hmm. you've got, obviously, a lot of bleaching. You've got a lot of people who idolise lighter skin or darker skin in different cultures. So totally. that's going to play a big role, isn't it, in, like, pageants? Like, you'll get someone who will want to be lighter mm-hmm. or looking at someone who's lighter thinking that that's the one who's going to win. And then vice versa with the darker skin. Totally. Um, I won't touch on it massively, but the re- politics is in play, mm. as, as it is always. Um, but they they follow suit. They fuel the stereotype. Okay. So, for example, like talking about bleaching of skin, when I travelled over to Asia, like last year or a couple of years ago. It's big over there, isn't it? Huge. Mm. Huge. Like I'd run out of moisturiser because I'd been there for a while. I did the same thing in Thailand. I was like, I need a moisturiser. picked it up. Bleaching. Mm-mm. It's good job I didn't just buy it, Jesus. I just had a white face. Right, exactly. <laughs> All the time that I've spent weeks building, just gone. Yeah. Stripped. I was like, what am I going to do? What is this? Um, excuse me, but like the the girls that were then representing their country mm. fueled that same stereotype. Because that's what they've been... They don't know any difference to it because that's what they've been brought up with, no, isn't it? I definitely don't want to diminish all their accomplishments mm. because they were fantastic. They're still doing their Miss World projects to this day. And that's five years on. Mm. They're amazing girls. But you could see how the countries wanted to kind of fuel that stereotype and keep it going because mm. it's been successful for them in the past. Like um, Latino countries, they would have girls who were very voluptuous, very curvy, um, just very aesthetically beautiful because that is what they would see as as success. Mm. Whereas um, more like Uganda and African countries, they were looking so heavily on humanitarian values. Okay. So if they had an incredible Miss World project and they really wanted to see the development between them and their countries and to see how they can better themselves that was seen as desirable right okay so they just picked it depending on culture and so how did the how did the judges go about judging that kind of competition then because you've got so many different cultures so many different beauty standards so like Mm -hmm. you said you'll have curvy girls you'll have slim girls you'll have different body types as well Mm -hmm. how do they go off what's the sort of overall score to sort of win that kind of competition then is it sort of tick box of everything yeah of everything but they have chaperones that follow you around 24-7. Really? 24-7. Um, so you can't mess up? <laughs> no. So even when you're like sat in a queue or just waiting for something, if you can hear someone going, oh, this is such a pain in the arse, you can just see them like going, oh my God, I have no chance. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, what the hell is wrong with this queue, bro? I'm a hungry person. I'll be in the queue <laughs> like kicking off oh, the papers <laughs> talking about like being in the queue for food and stuff i was thinking oh these girls aren't gonna eat like this is ridiculous mm. oh. first night we all got in we had a buffet these girls were going back for three and four plates really i, like, I love this <laughs> i'm thinking oh i'm gonna have to take like one shy plate and maybe like so a nobody was paranoid one. and bloating or anything like that none of that amazing none of well that done, girls oh my god these girls were coming back and they had like big plates of brownies big cakes you know like not skewers of like halloumi mm. or peppers or whatever they had like huge cakes and they were going that yeah was come on just bring it all around in the 20s category though wasn't it mm. so do you reckon it would be any different like now if someone was like an older age maybe um possibly possibly i think um given the way that the world is developing at this insane rate yeah. right now then yeah yeah maybe even totally for good. younger ages right now like with all the social media pressures Oh, that's why all these influencers like I don't I don't mind these filters, these edits or like 
doing whatever you need to do to kind of get the bag. Yeah, chase the bag, bro. It's calm. Oh, I can see you getting vexed. Don't get me started on that. Oh, uh, yeah, they totally do get vexed, but they have such a responsibility, mm. and I feel like there should be some consequence if you yes. have X amount of following, X amount of engagement, and you're promoting tummy tea, for example, mm. you're promoting going to the gym or calorie deficit, whatever it is, you are impressioning on the younger generation to the point where we already know body dysphoria is a huge thing. You are now the problem. You are part of the problem. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you see that quite a lot in your fitness lifestyle. We need another hour if I start speaking about this. Uh, uh, like, okay. I just, I'm just going to say one thing. I'm just going to say one thing. The thing is with like, obviously beauty standards, and it's, it links nice to actually what we're speaking about anyway, but like, I think if you're going to use filters, you've got a big platform and mm. you're using that platform, you've got so many eyes watching, young guys. If you using filters and stuff, fine. Okay, you're not changing the features. You're not changing mm. your body. If you start changing your body, having a tiny waist, big bum, you know, changing your lips, all this kind of stuff, and it's not even you. You're changing this. Mm. That then says the other per the other person behind the filter isn't worthy. That's what people are gonna look and see. I need big bum. I need big lips. I'm not happy with my figure. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? There's all this self-love and whatnot and i love that but to self-love yourself through filters you're not loving yourself you're, not you're loving, loving yourself. this technology like version of you yep totally i oh. <laughs> it really vexes did me. you see is it chloe kardashian or one of them that got exposed recently where they had the um oh yeah that picture that was unedited yeah but, but she thing, looked insane she looked good without the edit but this is the thing like she were kicking off because it wasn't edited and mm. Well, that was that's the kind of niche, isn't it? Yeah. Everything's being edited. Everything's singed. Everything's wide at the hip. Everyone's got big back. But, mm. but that's why there's so many girls getting BBL, getting you know. Do lip you know fillers. the mortality rate for BBL? It's ridiculous. <laughs> like that's, that's the surgery to get oh, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the um, the risk outweighs the benefit. Right. But I can imagine they're willing to do that. They're willing to take that risk just for the gram. Mm. Just for a few likes. For the gram and because it's the trend. The thing is, mm. that wasn't the trend back then. Like, you know, back in the day, the trend was to be very slim. Mm. It's The pendulum has swung so far across. We've gone from mm. like, don't don't cuss me out, Kate Moss, but Kate Moss kind of slim up and down. Yeah. Like you can just fit in anything, really slim belly, like no thick thighs or whatever. Mm. To now wanting to have thick thighs, but not doing it in the organic way. You're now trying to pay money mm. to create a body that god has given you you've got ample opportunities for you to go and build the body that you want but no i just want it quick i yeah. want it now this is the thing and the trend like of being that way look who the role models are like people who, ha- who have had surgery mm. you know what i mean Nicki minaj kardashians all them people who've had surgery yeah like i don't think jlo's had surgery but we should be idolizing her if we're going to idolize someone who's curvy and actually works out mm. for it you know That's what i mean it. exactly <laughs> like someone who actually puts the work in like if you want to look like that then you know you can go to the gym and and eat well you might not look like another person but just be the best version of what you've got best version isn't it? of yourself definitely and you know what if you wanted if you desperately had this in your mind like oh i've got a really a really wide waist i've mm. always wanted a small waist i just i want to go for surgery but then all the pictures that you post you are transparent about that surgery yeah calm 100 percent. you do you if you're, you're living it real it. Yeah, because the rest of the girls are thinking, oh, that's natural. How do I get it natural? Oh, I want that. Mm. No, you're just going to hurt yourself mentally. You're going to think, you're going to be fueling that comparison part of your brain with everything you do. So now you're looking at aesthetic, you're looking at jobs, you're looking at your purchases, Mm. your relationship. You're never going to be internally happy with anything because you're just going to be looking at the grass is greener elsewhere. Mm. 100%. 100%. It's, it's dangerous. It is. It is. And this is the thing, like, beauty standards in general, like, you know, you get so many criticism and critique however you look. You know what I mean? Even, oh, yeah. Even mm. if you get to that point and you think, right, I'm happy with my figure, there's going to be either, there's going to be something in your brain that says, actually, I want to change that, or someone else will make a comment. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, did you ever get any expectations or anything like that, like, critique uh... being in a beauty pageant? I did. You did, yeah? <laughs> I did. Um, I won't name names, but she'll know who she is. 
um, first day that I won, mm. I had done like all the press and whatnot that night. And we had a little party in the casino next door, which I couldn't get into, by the way, because I was only 20. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> she wanted. Like, she couldn't get in. That's it. There was the guy at the front was like, oh, well, does she have any ID? Like, I was like, oh, well, I'm, you know, crown on. <laughs> I'm, I just sneak this crown in. I'm Not a, really me. Miss England. Um, It's kind of my party upstairs. Can I... <laughs> And I just head up and he was like, sorry, bro, if you're not 21, you can't get in. My dad comes through and he was like, oh, listen, mate, listen. <laughs> uh, my daughter's just won this a is, national this competition. That's his impression right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this isn't even the best impression, but like just the way that he went. Right, yeah. So, yeah, can I you just... You know who uh, I am. <laughs> you don't know who I am because we're in Southport, but everybody else does. And you don't want to know yeah. what I can do to this establishment. Mm. As he's doing his whole thing, there was a former Miss England's mum who's like really involved in it. And she was like, Liz, psst. Just come in oh, yeah come on. she's just like shoved out the gate we'll just say your dad helped you get in that one it wasn't the woman yeah <laughs> yeah Des, no you you did well thank you very much for that you just did the whole distraction yeah, and then that I was, was just it like, it, run, was, run, run, run. it was a team effort team effort oh my god yeah we could easily rob a bank with that type of team effort it was great so you got I didn't in. say that <laughs> i uh, i got in it was great we all had such fun and there was an initiation service which i didn't i didn't realize okay um then it was from the Miss England at the time, some former Miss Englands, and they were like, right, what you need to do, <laughs> you need to back these two JD and Cokes. You've got four tequilas, two Sambucas, and like some mimosas. You've just got to back it all. And Jesus. I was just high on adrenaline. I was like, give me anything, bro. <laughs> yes, I'm going to do this. Backed it all. And they were like, yeah, well done. And then the PR woman came over and she was like, Liz, you have a PR at seven in the morning with like, you know, national press. I was like, Okay, cool, 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 cool. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> Two in the morning, it is, and I've got PR at seven. I was like, I need, I need to, I need to go. I yeah. need to, okay, right, I'm <laughs> going. So I left in the morning. Oh, it was the maddest thing. We had people coming up in, into my dorm room with like food on like a silver platter. We had someone doing my nails, someone doing my hair and my makeup. And I was just sat like this, mm. being taken care of like a queen. I thought, this is, this is weird, but. I can totally get used to this. I like this. Um, And then this girl came in and she was like, "Uh, listen, Liz, I think we might need to speak about some elocution lessons. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, they do say Northerners are friendly, but apparently we're the worst ones at English. Get out. I I know we lose like the in a lot of things. Oh, I love. love. You're right, love. You're right, Chuck. I'm thinking you don't have no respect for me you think that i'm just gonna jump on the camera and go yo you're right pet what's wagwan do you know what i mean I having mean, the crown on and whatnot so what if you do <laughs> i'd be being so real i would have loved to have done that like in hindsight i would have loved to have been more me mm. but more me came out towards the end yeah of my of my reign which was good because you were still just finding growth. yourself as well because you were young so oh, i was a baba <laughs> oh, i was a baba but it, it stuck with me her mm. saying about elocution lessons every time I went was you on... paranoid how you were speaking after that then yeah mm. I mean you can tell now I don't necessarily have quite a northern accent mm. it's very I don't know smack bang in the middle if you get me passionate and you hear me talking yeah the northernness comes out definitely <laughs> like oh, what are you saying man I wouldn't say that the northern but <laughs> oh really is that more road man yeah oh, okay uh, yeah what are you saying man? no what are you saying bro that's not really northern is it well it's classed as northern when I think of Northern, I just think of like, like, all right. All right, all right love. love. All right, love. How you been? All right? Oh, oh you're going to the shop. You're going, going, go, going to the shop. Going go, to the shop. See, yeah, going to the shop. You kind of miss, you miss little words out, innit? Yeah, instead mm. of, I am going to the shop, mm. going to the shop. So where's the different sort of, you know, accents coming from? Dialect like come from? Um, I would say in 2019, I was like across to Australia okay. and America thailand and a few different other countries mm. but i had been spending a lot of time with friends who are american right so i've got a little bit of yeah a twang i can sometimes. hear it actually really yeah yeah a little bit mad i feel like it's just gone completely i think it's when you say but 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 but, but yeah <laughs> <laughs> but. Well, you sounded like latino then oh, well, I was like, i'll take that <laughs> i feel like i'm in bloody some south africa or something right now because it's boiling i'm gonna try so opening the windows so but hopefully that. won't get much Back noise. I'll try that. Oh, I'll feel that breeze. My top, my top lip is sweating. Oh, okay. Got, you got a Sula. 
A sula, sweaty upper lip alert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Just sweating my lip off. Oh, BBC One Extra. Oh, oh Jesus. Come through. Right, well, through. this is why you shouldn't do podcasts in the car, kids. <laughs> Hey, don't worry, we're starting shit. It's just Over freestyle. Turn it down. There you go. Oh, nicely done. <laughs> <laughs> Improvise. <laughs> um, oh, that breeze is so good. It's beautiful. <laughs> top lip. Yeah, that's done. every time the top lip. That's where I get it. Really? Sweat. Yeah, nowhere else, just top lip. I get it there, and then I get it like right just near my nose, so it makes it look like I've almost been crying. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. This hasn't been like an emotional type of. Oh, Let's bring again. the emotion then. I'm joking. Um, ah! <laughs> so when you went traveling, what inspired mm. you to do that? Then is that something you always wanted to do? I love traveling. It's in my bones. Mm. When I was 18, I when ended up volunteering in Fiji. Okay. There was a guy that came through in freshers and was like, "Oh, we're just doing." this volunteer program you can go over and i think it was deal with an african safari you can go scuba diving and skydiving in fiji walking through the amazon rainforest in ecuador where do i sign yeah literally (laughs) personally i'm an ocean baby so as soon he was going through everything with like animals and you know working with elephants in a, a sanctuary as soon as he said fiji i was like yeah done signed it up and raised the money Ended up going over there for two wow. weeks. Oh, Cora, it was the best time ever. It was just incredible to see how the other side live. Mm. And to just... I remember because they had no couch. They just okay. had kind of like a mattress on the floor and then that was it. And after everything had gone on, when I came home and I sat on... The couch is really American, isn't it? When I sat mm. on the settee... That's a couch. Do you say couch? Yeah. Do you know what? I say American. I, I say pants. For, like, bottoms. Pants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pants. Yeah, but then when I went... I don't know if it's a Northern or American thing, or maybe a bit off, I don't know. Okay. But um, when I went to the Midlands and I said, like, something about pants, I was like, what? You pants? They say underpants for pants. Oh. Yeah, so I'm talking about, oh, I need to get some pants. And they're thinking, why you not got any on? And I'm like, <laughs> well, I need to go and buy some pants. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, bottoms. <laughs> yeah, there's bottoms, yeah. trousers. Yeah, pants. so pants... Like, I say pants for, like, trousers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah. Whereas in the Midlands they say pants for underpants and then trousers is trousers. Oh, okay. So if you're like, oh yeah, I'm wearing my pants out. Well, tonight. I think that's American as well, isn't it? I think so. Mm. I've heard of that. Well, there you go. Oh, well, Americans, you're just wrong, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> you get everything wrong. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, so that's that was your first sort of experience travelling in Fiji then? It was. Yeah, and yeah. then that let, like, lit the spark and then. All it that, but that bug was heavy. Mm. As soon as I came back, I was like, when am I going next? got the travel bug. I, I need to go. I need mm. to go. But that was in 2015. And then finished my first year. Was starting in my second year, you know, getting my head down with exams. Mm. Miss England then came through. Mm. So I finished my second year kind of doing the fundraising and the run up and training for the Miss England final. Then I won. So I had to take a sabbatical and it was just a roller coaster from then. But it was the best time ever. There's so many times when I think, like, oh, I'm 25, I'm still living at home, like, what am I going to do? And, eh. You're still a baby. I'm still, yeah, I'm still a baby. I'm still a baby. But I've done so much. Mm. I've done so, so much. many accomplishments that you engage. It's amazing. Yeah. I think it's just nice to sit and reflect and just sit with the things that you've done. Mm. Whether it might be big or small, just things that were a challenge for you that you have yes, now accomplished. Definitely. Go back yourself. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just learning how to do that at the minute, which I just feel really good now. I'm like, yeah, I love myself. Yeah. Sick. <laughs> so, would you do any more like beauty contests or anything like that then? Or is that sort of something that you've done that you're ready for the next thing? Or is, or is it something that's still there that you want to do? Mm, if you would have asked me two years ago, mm. I'd have said, yeah. Okay. But I've seen how beauty pageants are being run now, especially with this new climate of Instagram and okay. ads and influencers. It just seems... I don't even like saying this word, but it seems fake. Mm. I don't want to be a part of that. Social media is fake, though. When totally. you think When you think about it, it is fake. It's just a highlight reel. Yeah, that's all it is. is. But, you know, if that's the trend again, then that's what people mm. are following, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, if mm. you want to do that, you do you. If you think you're very good at parking your real life and just showing off on social media and you can do that comfortably, mm. feel free. Beauty pageants will just give you that industry letting to the music industry, 
the modeling industry, presenting industry, that type of entertainment, that's just your walkthrough, bro. Yeah. Even if you don't win. I feel like this day and age, you know, like, obviously, do you go on, do, do you do like a speech or something when you go on to the stage? Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like now, when people go on, they just start doing Savage or some dance to yeah. TikTok or something. <laughs> like in this day and age, isn't it? Yeah, like to 100%. start doing TikTok. And then you'll get all the little ones or like, what is it, Gen Z? Just yeah. like, oh my yeah. God, yeah, this is great. Oh, mm. my life, you're killing me. Ah. What was your speech? Uh, for my Miss England kind of yeah. final or I my handover. <laughs> <laughs> no, I will tell you though, on the... There was top five of us, right? Okay. So we've done the top 20. The rest of the girls have gone back to sit in the crowd. And we had top four. There was Miss... Let's see if I can get this right. Miss Lancashire, who was my friend, Lucy. Miss Newcastle. Mm, me. Oh, Gloucestershire, I think. I know her name, but she might just kill me because I've got it all wrong. <laughs> and... Oh, there's another one. It's going to drive me mad, but I can't think. You've said yourself, haven't you? I have said myself. <laughs> <yeah. laughs> uh, either way, another one. I can't remember. I'm so sorry. Um, but they did, the four of them, and I was like in the back with the last top 20 thinking, no, nah, it's not going to be me. Okay. It's not going to be me. And my parents, I forgot to tell you this. Okay. After every round, my parents were like in the far right corner and they were just going, when you finished, drink for your love. You know? <laughs> They had no clue I was going to win. They were just like, you know what? She's got this far. Aww. This is great. You know, well done for you. Yeah. <laughs> they weren't expecting nothing. So I've like, saved this drink here then after the next round. Literally. They kept saving drinks after each round and then I kept getting through. So they were like, I'll just, I'll, I'll oh, this it one. then. <laughs> the fact well, my kept... dad had just like completely gone by then. <laughs> yeah, you've just hit the nail on the head. I had mum, dad, brother, cousins, aunties, uncles. Out of it. Out of it. Mm. Absolutely rat face. That's my old spot. Moral support. Oh, yeah. I loved it. Yeah. They were the loudest ones there, which that's, was that's just us. Yeah. That's the grants in it. They were just loud, <laughs> and uh, I kept getting through and getting through. So they kept getting more smashed, <laughs> and it got to the top twenty, and they'd done the four, and I think they were all like, "Oh, she's not going to be in it." Yeah, not gonna get be a drink. Oh, miss. You, unless they knew he was going to win, and they was using that to get drinks for themselves. You know, I didn't even think of that. If mm. they've had to live on that lie for five years yeah. props to them I've bro sussed it. Yeah. you've, you've, sussed, you've sussed, sussed it you've sussed them all out <laughs> you'll be lying to me for five years like, not gonna win this one love <laughs> <laughs> no they're gonna i'll kill him <laughs> thinking that i'm not gonna win no but they didn't say anything they were like yeah of course you can win yeah, yeah. <laughs> bullshit <egg. laughs> and um after they call the top five, they call mm. the first one and they go, oh, we've got um, a question from the judges. So this girl's like, obviously, oh my God, who are the top five? Grabs a microphone and they go, oh, thank you very much for your question. Good evening, judges, ladies and gentlemen. And goes through with the question, like a stock phrase. Right. Beautifully done, right? And then it gets to one, two, three, four. Miss Preston is our final top five. My family gone mad. <laughs> The, like we had the northwest girls some friends that i'd found during the whole process of it that were going mm. mental and i'd come up and i i can remember i was shaking with this microphone i was like what the hell do i do i didn't think i'd get this far okay. i don't have an answer so you're not prepped nothing no i prepped <laughs> nothing at all nothing and i remember the question i can't remember my answer but i remember the question mm. and she was like oh hi elizabeth um just wondering what you would like to leave behind if you were to be Miss England what would you want to leave behind as your legacy in the next three to five years what do you want people to remember you by right and I was mm. like okay 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 okay. um and I remember just going thank you very much for your question but first can I just give like a hands up to the girls behind us who have done so so well the ones who haven't made it you know congratulations to them golf clap all round which gave me a good eight seconds <laughs> to think of something that, and it also shows how genuine you are and it's not like you're out for yourself like you're actually appreciating everyone else mm. in the competition which is straight away i would have been like yes <laughs> if i was a judge <laughs> i didn't think of it like mm. that in my mind i was like i need to feel that's a good answer straight no away idea. i didn't even know the rest of the answer <laughs> i'm sold <laughs> that's probably that's probably why it works mm. yeah thank god yes well done it's probably a good thing good you job. didn't prep then yeah i think if i did you wouldn't have said that I would have, it would have just been something that everybody's been heard before, you know, I, I want to be remembered as 
kind hearted. I want to be remembered as um, being, I don't know, I have humility, I'm mm. generous. and You know, that thing that everybody is, but just it seems better when you're on yeah. stage. Um, but I think my question was something along the lines of just being real. Like, I want mm. to be authentic. I don't want to be this Miss England that everybody wants me to be. I want to be my version of Miss England. Mm. Because then that shows that I... I've, I've added a part of myself to this legacy because everyone's going to remember the former Miss England. Mm. But I just want to be true to myself. And I think that worked because a lot of them were like, oh, I just really want to better the, you know, the homelessness problem that we have here in England or da 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 da, da which is always great. Yeah. But everyone's heard of that. But then everyone's that... heard that, haven't they? And it's, yeah. I mean, how genuine, they might want to help them, but how genuine is it really? Exactly. You know what I mean? If you haven't done any work regarding the homeless beforehand, mm. then why, why is it taking you to why get now? a national yeah. title for you to then do that work? If you're so passionate about it, do it before. Mm. 100%. Yeah. And I think <laughs> that answer definitely helped. I, I came off and I was like, I'd, I've, I've boxed it. I've absolutely done it wrong. I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, I've just, I failed. And there was this one girl who was my friend Lucy, who was Miss Lancashire. In the run-up, she'd been doing amazing, right? She'd, everyone kind of knew who she was. The judges knew who she was. And when it came to handing out the sashes, so Beautiful Smile, um, Beach Beauty. Mm. So, like, we did have a swimwear competition okay but it wasn't like miss universe right have you seen the miss universe competition no, i haven't seen that's that's no worries that's fine <laughs> so they still go on like what happened in like the 60s okay so you've got your bikini on and then you've got your heels and you're walking up and down a stage which is in its sense fine but there's a lot of underlying things like it's just for the male gaze or like it can be mm. quite sexist yeah we did ours but it was more in a setting where you would find a girl in a swimming costume right so we did it on a beach or we did it in um in a swimming pool okay but it wasn't like you didn't see any heels there wasn't like any of the accentuated like lustful poses it yeah was because just... it's been over sexualized now hasn't it so in the beach i suppose that's that fits that environment doesn't it exactly yeah i think that was where they were going with it and it worked yeah. it worked really well because a lot of the girls were just felt much more comfortable mm. was having to like strut your stuff in nothing that you can hide in that's a good idea though because like Panic. you said if You've got all eyes on you already. And then if you're half naked on the stage as well, mm. all eyes looking at you, including like, you know, men as well. It's at a young age. It's, it's a lot. Yeah, he's daunting. And they, mm. they wanted to move away from that because they wanted to look more at the humanitarian aspect of yeah. these girls and like the, the potential for their passions. Yes. Not just how pretty can you look in a dress and how big can your hair get mm. which is obviously a factor because it's a beauty competition but they're looking more at other aspects of beauty yeah more so than they would the do whole in, package the whole mm. package more than they would do in the miss universe that's yeah. still kind of stuck in the, the 60s i feel and like, 70s. I, like i've learned a lot today i feel like you know a lot of people do have that stigma against beauty competitions mm. i probably was one of them as well i just thought yeah it is literally I'm just going to say world peace again because that's what Miss Congeniality... The first all, thing. All, all that kind of stuff, you know, Miss Congeniality kind of stigma about it just going on, having them, which she still have, the fixed lines, like practicing lines, blah, 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 come off the stage. Of course, yeah. You know what I mean? I would be terrified of falling in heels. That's That would be my thing, but... I did. Oh, well, good. <laughs> <laughs> At least I don't want to oh, my God, then. yeah. The Miss England's falling on stage. Oh, I did. It's, it's authentic. Awful. It's real. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh that's what i said i wanted to be authentic i wanted to be real there you go it's worked out for me well yeah that's I'll it take, i'll take that falling heels if you want to win falling heels <laughs> keep it natural <laughs> yes yeah just deck it and then walk up with it. <clears throat> it's fine <laughs> what kind of opportunities sort of came up for after doing that then so after doing miss england mm -hmm. what sort of opportunities obviously you said you had the option of doing the degree or going down the modeling route in yeah. that degree has any opportunities come after that or is it been... Oh, they're still coming through. Oh, they're still tenfold. coming through. Yeah. That's good. It's like five years ago. Bloody hell. Which is amazing, which is great. I'm still... I'm modelling freelance. I've presented Miss Newark and Miss Manchester. Okay. Which is great. I love presenting. It's just everyone's on stage and looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm a semi-narcissist. Um, <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. I... Yeah, it's been so good because the people that i have ended up speaking with during my time 
I kind of thought that that would be it. They just want to know about the current Miss England. Mm. So they talk to you up until that time and then they go back to the next Miss England and do the same thing. But because of how natural the relationship came when I was Miss England, it's carried on. Mm. So I feel like I've done, I've done the work that I wanted to do. I didn't just want to kind of do the work and go home. I wanted to create something that is long lasting. Mm. And I seem to have done that because there are a lot of people who were speaking to me now. Um, we've got the tourism board in Sri Lanka. Oh, wow. When I went over there, because that, that was my holiday, I think, after Miss England. But my free holiday that I won was to Mauritius. I still speak to them. They're always asking, like, when am I coming back? When am I coming through? Or we've got an opportunity for you to come over. Mm. Like, does this fit with your schedule? And it, oh, it's just great to see the opportunities that have come through. Yeah. And that are still going to be heading up to me now. Mm. I don't reckon you're going to be living in England all your life. Oh, good Lord, no. No. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. no. no. I have plans to, to dash away <laughs> over to Malaysia. <laughs> I'm going to go soon, as soon as I can get my TEFL certificate. Mm. That's what I'm currently doing. So you're going to go to Malaysia? Is that? That's the plan. I've been once yeah. before, and I think that is my favourite country by far. To live? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the end goal sort of thing, to live there. Yeah, and go Malaysia or Hawaii. Mm, obviously, Hawaii. obviously. If it's in Hawaii, then I can visit. hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, I'm gonna get the best villa. Yeah, oh, do it. my days. Yeah, my first party. Everyone's coming through. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, come through. Yeah, I'll come through. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, where else did I want? Oh, I have. It's either Malaysia, mm. Sydney, in Australia. Mm. I want a New York apartment. You're like putting it out into the universe so all this is going to happen. I am. (laughs) It will happen. It will happen. Of course. I don't know when. Hopefully very soon. Um, But I feel like the New York is going to be further on in life. Yeah. But they're all completely different places as well. Like New York is like you've got your city life and Mm. then you've got your beach life. So it's all different environments to live in. So you might find when you get there, the city life might might not be for you and the beach life or the Mm. way around. Yeah. Mm. I'd like to maybe have two houses yeah, to float between yeah but like like you said different types of different types of culture yeah. so i'd want the chill island life so that could be maybe malaysia or hawaii and mm. then the high end then you go of... for miss hawaii or is that is that not right if you don't want you have to be born in the place or not uh i think you have to be a resident for over 10 years right 10 years away 10 years <laughs> easy box it off i'm gonna yeah. go to hawaii i'll do it and go out everywhere be miss everywhere <laughs> Yes, yeah. I feel like a Pokemon, just catch them all. Do it. Yeah. yeah. Miss Preston now. I've got my Miss Preston crown, my Miss England crown. You need to get to Hawaii, get there 10 years, then sign up for that. 100%. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what's next? I know obviously you've got this, this sort of plan for the future. What's uh-huh. next sort of like maybe this year? What have you got planned? Like what's, this year. what's next for you? Next year. Okay. So I, like I said, I've been um, working towards my TEFL qualification, yeah. which is teaching English as a foreign language. Mm-hmm. And that just opens so many avenues because yeah. I don't think I've been like homebound over a year in over six years, mm. really. So to be sat at home doing nothing, it's grating on my soul. Yeah. Well, lockdown in it, it's, it's not for everyone. <laughs> it's, it's not. I mean, you're trying to find the joy in it. You know, you've mm. got so much free time for yourself, but I can I can just feel yeah. a part of my soul that is like, you just, you really need to go. You need to go mm. now. Um, but if I can get my TEFL, I can teach anywhere. Yeah. So that's my plan for this year. So have you started that? Are you going to... I have started, started it. that now, yeah. Yeah, I'm on like unit four and there's 10 units, I think. Okay. So if I can just keep doing that every couple of hours a day, box it off by hopefully end of July. Okay. And then I've got... I'm working three jobs at the minute. I'm teaching and I'm bartending and waitressing at Floriana's in okay. Preston. If you I'll don't know, I'll get in. to know. Mm. And I am going to be an NCS program leader. Okay. Have you heard of NCS? No. NCS. It's like National Citizenship Scheme, I think. Okay. But it's very similar to a Duke of Edinburgh award. Right. But I would be the program leader. So I'd be making sure that these groups of 13 to 18 year olds um, are safe on this two week program. Mm. The first week they're camping. So, you know, don't eat that berry. You'll die. Can you... (laughs) fix up a tent i'll help you make a fire just keeping them safe and then the second week they will be doing like a fundraising aspect okay. so they've got to find a charity think about how they'll fundraise it fundraise the money for that week and i'm just making sure that like oh maybe you do the presentation or why don't you go and do this while this is you know in the pipeline mm. just 
advising them and i'll be doing that that's amazing yeah. such a good soul aren't you oh i try <laughs> i try i just love helping it just it mm. sounds so bait but i do it just would, fills my soul. would you say obviously you don't have to speak about this as well but would you mm. say your sister passing has a lot of influence of what you do now as well massively yeah yeah definitely um i yeah it's just it's so sweet to think that she's still making an impact mm. and it's been 20 years i think this year since she passed it's crazy it's mad so many things have happened mm. um but i just i feel her presence so much and there is a certain sign that i know that when she's around yeah um and it's the number 12 okay so 12 has been a really important number in our life for a long time just a few quick examples I well she was 12 when she passed right 12 is the date of my birth 12th of April there's 12 years between me and my older brother and then when we've been as a family just in times of maybe despair or frustration you'll see like a 12 on the time or Mm. you'll be sat at a table at a restaurant you'll be sat on number 12 and you're like yeah she's here she's here she was actually there with me at the Miss Preston and the Miss England final because I was number 12. Oh, wow. And it was just oh, icing on the cake. I yeah. Was like, yeah, she's there. That's nice to have that there, though. Like you said, mm. it is literally just little signs. But I mean, it's nearly 12 now as well. Mm. I was looking at the time thinking, no, 12. Yeah. There you go. She's, she's she listening. Here. She's listening. <laughs> she is. She's making sure that, oh, you know, yeah. you're on the right path. Yeah. Yeah, you're doing everything right. That's beautiful. Right. So how old was she when she passed then? She was 12 when she passed. When I was five. Okay. Mm. Oh, so she was older. Yeah. Yeah, right. she was my older sister. Um, she ended up being diagnosed with a brain tumour when she was seven. Um, and you're supposed to go like five years in remission mm. before you're kind of cleared of it. Okay. But the chemo had just taken it out of her. She was At such a young age as well. Like Very young, yeah. She was developing. She was just a very petite child mm. like myself and my older brother chris we were chunky babies we were we were fat but it, <laughs> it wasn't like a, oh you've just been fed well we were fat babies which was great well you're owning it so <laughs> oh yeah 100 i don't think i've seen a fatter child right i'll send you a picture okay how mr t has that kind of mohawk yeah, in the yeah. middle. You had my that. hair didn't grow from the sides oh for the longest time so there's a baby going on yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> i was a mr t child with like mitchell in rolls everywhere Amazing. oh it was brilliant um but Melanie was very petite. Right. So when she was going through the chemo and whatnot, it just kind of really knocked it into her. And she was feeling really weak. Mm. And it came back, I think, four, four years or four and a half years. She was so close. And it just unfortunately took her. Mm. But there has been a blessing. I mean, I miss you, love, but, you know, you did well. The um, My dad raised half a million pounds. Wow. He helped raise half a million pounds to get this gamma radio machine that could scan your brain and not damage the brain cells for it's cancerous amazing. cells mm. he did fantastic and that, how did he raise that then did he do like a charity event or tons of charity tons. events for like 18 months because my dad's a dj along with my sister mm. uh, my brother even and he just did tons of different like 24 hour gigs or right. let me do this for free let me speak on the radio i'll go on tv and just getting the word out because the charity that he was raising money for was called Melanie's Magic Wonder Peel. Okay. And people were just so distraught to hear what had happened mm. that they were just, oh, we'll send money here, we'll send money there, or businesses. Yeah, because they know it's through. going to a good cause. Yeah. 100%. And I think it just, he pulled on heartstrings. It mm. would do. I mean, what, your oldest daughter's now got cancer and we need a machine to save her life? Yeah. It was before the GoFundMe page. Yeah. So he kind of did it, you know, raw. He did it. He did everything hands on. Mm, fair play. Mm, fair play to him completely. But that machine now is in Royal Preston Hospital. Oh, wow. And in the intensive care unit, there's a plaque of Melanie that just kind of shows, you know, this, I think, I can't remember what it says, but something along the lines of like, this girl had helped. I think my mum mentioned that. Actually. that. My mum works in the hospital and she said, yeah, because really? I said I was going to meet you. She, she mentioned that. I was like, oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she's there. Oh. She's watching that for everybody over there. That's amazing. <laughs> well, do you know what? I think that we'll, we'll call it there. Okay, and, yeah, um, no problem. We always do a final four with all my guests. A final four? Yeah. Okay. You might want you excited. No, I'm joking. <laughs> final four? What do I, what do I need? <laughs> it's just four questions. Cool. Um, and they can be short or long answers. Shoot. Yeah. yeah. Everyone, ev- everyone goes long for some reason. 
but we might go short today. We'll see what happens. I feel like this is this is like a Liz go short. <laughs> Liz, we've been on for a while. Go short. Right. <laughs> Favorite quote. Just on the spot now. <laughs> one that just springs to mind. It did. It did mm. just spring to mind. Just do one thing and do it well. My dad. Your dad? My dad. My dad said so, that. So, just do one thing and do it well. Des mm. Grant. Yeah. <laughs> right. Des Grant quotated. Right. Well, you're famous after this, Des. <laughs> you are. You've been getting a lot of uh, a lot of love in this yeah, podcast. Yes. Jesus. Yeah. Right, I'll have to get you on then. Is it? <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll get you done. <laughs> <laughs> if this is an hour you'll be talking to Des for like two and a half oh right? we'll need a longer time than oh, 100% yeah <laughs> what advice would you give to someone starting out in the beauty industry don't lose yourself yeah just don't mm. lose yourself like if you're going into it either be strong mentally so you know where you are and you know your morals how you stand and so they can't be swayed because mm. there's a lot of people, a lot of very, very clever, very high up, manipulative people that will just kind of drip feed some things into you and you'll be like, oh, maybe it's... No, yeah. it's not. <laughs> you know exactly what you want. You know exactly what you're doing. Stick to your guns. And if you're not there yet or if you're in the process of that, make sure you've got a good support network yeah. around you. Yeah, and there's no rush either, you know? Oh, my God, yeah. Don't rush into it. And don't... If you're going to go for, like, a modelling agency, don't pay for any of your portfolios. That's mm. just a heads that up That gets a lot of people, that, doesn't it? A lot mm. of people end up paying stupid money for a portfolio and then they don't end up having anything from it. Like, there can be a lot of dodgy businesses out there as well, Oh, they, they do. Yeah, especially when they're like, oh, well, we've been seeing your profile and, oh, I could definitely see you in Vogue. You've got a very... This is, mm. this is a great Playing on, yeah. Unique look to you. And you're like... In a world mm, where everyone me? looks the same, me? <laughs> me? Oh, they must be. They must be true. I've, yeah. got, I've got to go. No, no, girl, you don't. <laughs> you don't. Just do you, and it'll come through to you. Yeah, promise you. It's a nice answer. Mm. Um, one piece of uh, one piece of advice you would give to your younger self. Ooh, my younger self. <laughs> um, don't be afraid of your goofiness definitely mm. i am goofy through and through and i love that now i've appreciated that but i think at the time well when you're a kid you just kind of want to blend in mm. and i was like i just i, I don't want to i don't want to say that i'm like a marvel geek i don't want to yeah i don't want to like sport i just mm, no fuck it <laughs> do what you want bro it's so hard i feel sorry for kids you know oh massively i do mm. i mean i want kids but then i'm like at the same time, it's like, mm, might just get a dog. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so get a couple of dogs. Yeah, because yeah. there's so much pressure and everyone knows, especially, I know guys go through it as well, but every girl knows that, you know, you're always trying to fit in when you're younger. Like, Definitely. If you, if you love Marvel, then you get called a geek. You know mm, what I mean? Yeah, you know, like the, oh, you like anime, you must be like such a weirdo. Mm. No, doesn't matter, bro. Everybody, Own it. Yeah. Own your shit. Mm. people will come through with your vibe because you know that you're natural mm. and expect like oh try not to try not to lie yeah like it wasn't like i would do these big lies but just small little ones mm. so like going back to marvel do you like marvel yeah it's it's all right no <laughs> no i love it i breathe marvel mm. like yeah if you have a marvel character i'm just adding that question in it's not even on there that's absolutely fine bucky barnes Bucky Barnes. Bucky Barnes. Bloody I, hell, we expected that. I, I, have, oh, I have something about Bucky. I don't know what it is. It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> I have something Bucky. about Sebastian Stan. Oh you my god! on you. So Sebastian Stan, hit me up, bro, please. <laughs> <laughs> if you're watching this, see, I, I'm an Iron Man. Iron Man, completely. See, my first love mm, was Iron has Man. Has to be Iron easy. Man. It's his character. Oh, he just oozes confidence. Mm. Like, oh, and, oh, and his sarcasm. I mean, just, <laughs> my sarcasm was born through him. <laughs> It was. I yeah. used to watch it with my dad all the time. Yeah, third Junior. mention Desmond. Just, yeah. Oh, RDJ. He was. He was born to play Iron Man, wasn't he? hundred percent. I was no one else. Did you cry when he died? I oh, did. I'm really sorry if no one's seen the last I one. Mean, <laughs> <laughs> Complete. That is on you, bro. Because it's been out for time. It has, yeah. That is your fault. You should have seen it. And we're talking about Marvel, so not bothered. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was I was distraught. Mm. T- I watched <laughs> I watched Endgame three times in IMAX in the same week. I was just... I knew it was coming, but I was like... <laughs> Every time. Every time. Yeah. Even with Natasha. Like, I wanted Clint to go, bro. I'm sick of Clint. I mean, yeah. I like Natasha because I think, you know, she's hearty. She's got no... Sk- she's got fire. Ooh, she's mm. got fire. Do you know what I mean? Like, I just... Mm. 
<laughs> mm, I like her. She's not got no powers. She's not got no god, exactly. no magic hammer, no shield. See, I don't usually like people that don't have powers. Like, I don't like... Um, I don't really like Captain America. I know he's got powers. I know he's super strong, but Captain America's just a bit of an ass to me. Yeah, he's just... A little bit too goody goody. Mm. I think that's why I like Bucky Barnes. Yeah. Because I'm like, <laughs> you still, you were there, you've got She's the mindset lighted, of his I'm soul. talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love if he hit you up after this. <laughs> I would, I would, I would. Good lord. Oh. Told you to get distracted on the final <laughs> floor. It's fine. We have one more question. Okay, go for it. Daily habits to help you mentally. Oh, stretch as soon as you wake up. Stretch. Yeah, 100%. Um, do you does, do yoga? Trying to. Mm. Trying to. I just, seem to do quite a lot and i'm like yeah this is really good and then fall off the wagon like yeah. really quickly um but if i can do five to ten minutes maybe not ten five to seven minute stretches in the morning yeah oh it just makes my day so much better mm, stretching is so important so underrated as well it is mm. and i mean i'm i'm getting old i'm over the hill <laughs> i'm 25 now and i Listen, know if you're getting old i'm 28 what are you trying to say <laughs> right now <laughs> when's your pension coming through oh well you know <laughs> i don't have a pension i'll work and work and work Oh, God, don't work yourself to the bone, bro. Retire today. <laughs> yeah, in it. You know what I mean? Mm-mm. I'll be doing podcasts when I'm grey, oh, which is now. Yes. I'm grey now. Me... <laughs> Hit me up when you do another podcast, bro. Oh, yeah, well. Yeah, maybe you can get you one as a guest, maybe, to do, like, um, uh, yeah. uh, what do you call it? I forgot the name. Co-host. Yes. Co-host. Yeah, let's do it, because yeah. I was thinking of doing a podcast. Like, I've got a YouTube channel, and I'm like, mm. ah, I kind of fell off with it. But I could definitely do this again. Yeah. yeah. It's been fun. Yeah, I've loved it. I feel like we need a different topic every time. Like Marvel could be a topic. I feel that like could, could be like a good hour and a half, girl. Marvel fans, let me know if you want it. Mm-hmm. I've got all the fan <laughs> series. I've got all yeah. the... Yeah, definitely. So what are you a geek about then? Is it Marvel or... Is... You uh, MCU, ideally. All I, right. I do like the comics and I do know a little bit, but I know tons about the MCU. Mm. Yeah, that's just, that's my forte. Love a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> where can people find you on social you got a youtube account then i do yeah yeah it's under elizabeth grant um uh, my instagram is underscore elizabeth gx and you can hit me up through that i think that's the same for my twitter as well okay you're yeah. on twitter yeah? underscore elizabeth gx yeah okay find you on social it's been eventful thank you so much for coming on it hopefully has. get you on in the future again yeah definitely. maybe um maybe in hawaii oh oh my days yes do it to it whoever gets the condo first Mm. then has to invite us out absolutely calm you've seen it yeah it's happening (laughs) (laughs) thanks for listening guys thank you for coming on thank you for having me